Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Marcus Aurelius, and this is the ongoing adventures of the village of Aurelia in the beta version, that is to say, the ongoing beta version of Thea, The Awakening by Muha Games. And I apologize that it's been a while since my last episode. I was taken with an illness, one of the effects of which was that I lost my voice. And a YouTube lp -er with no voice is no YouTube lp -er at all, so I had to wait until I was better. And my voice is not entirely back yet, but it's good enough, I think, that I can finally get to recording, though I will not be singing any songs for a while, most likely, which you may find a good thing depending. But we are back in the village of Aurelia, and let me please introduce you to our villagers. First off, we have Nazoth, and Nazoth is a craftsman, so we are going to be using Nazoth to craft things. That makes sense, right? He is not entirely strong. He does pretty decent damage. He has good armor. He has really good will. That's important. His speech is pretty good. Now, the reason why these things are important, you might think, oh, well, he's a craftsman. He should always stay in the village and craft things. And for the most part, that's correct. But occasionally you have challenges when you're out and about. And it's good to have people that are strong in different areas because sometimes there's a speech challenge and sometimes there's an intelligence challenge. And while it's possible that you may have a warrior who is eloquent at speaking or very intelligent, the odds typically go against that and you're more likely to have a non-warrior who is strong in those abilities. Five in crafting. Actually, it's not that great. He has poor dexterity and stealth. Poor sixth sense. He's okay in folklore. He's wounded. Interesting. He has interesting animal kinship, blunt damage, poison, and pretty decent shielding. So that is Nazoth. We will initially use him as a craftsman, though I do like his blunt weapon. I might want to give that to one of our away team. Then we have Arcanas. Arcanas is also a craftsman, and Arcanas has also has a pretty strong will. Not as good a speech as Nazoth. Decent intelligence. Not as good at crafting. So Nazoth, so far, is a superior crafter. Pretty stealthy, though. Arcanas is pretty stealthy. He has the faint ability. And uh, he could use that in social and tactical challenge. Double faint damage to damaged characters. Interesting. He's basic herbalist. He's got a little bit of attractiveness. Can't you tell? He's pretty good at folklore and animal kinship. Basic levels. Excellent shielding. And he's good at distracting during sneak and hunting challenges. So that's pretty good, too, to have. All right. And then we have Jeremiah's Siska. Jeremiah's is a gatherer, of which we need quite a few because we're going to need resources. Decent damage and armor, though. Will and speech are acceptable levels. Intelligence is pretty low. Gathering is okay. He has piercing damage. But again, that's due to his weapon, not necessarily due to any innate trait that he has. And then we have Artanis. Artanis may be our most important character at this point, and that is because Artanis is a medic. It is very frequent that your adventuring party, and even the people in your village, will get wounded from one thing or another. And if they are wounded, they are likely to die. This is not a very forgiving game. So what a medic does is it allows you to keep people alive. So Artanis will always be adventuring with us to keep our adventuring party alive. And then hopefully at some point we will have another medic who we can always leave in the village a medic is probably one of the most important classes, if not the most important class. So let's look at her. Not very strong. She doesn't do much damage. She has decent armor because of the shield I gave her. Exceptional will. Okay speech. So that's kind of a shame. I would like my medic, especially because she's not very strong, to have some other skill that makes up for it. Hopefully speech. But in this case, her speech is okay, but not great. It's better than your run-of-the-mill warrior, but it's not fantastic. However, she is a level 3 medic, which is great. Her herbalism also could be better for a medic, but you take what you can get. She's also wounded. A little bit of folklore. Nothing great. Then we have Mathies. Mathies is our first warrior. 
And currently she is wielding a citrine axe and a pavise. From what I understand from my historical leanings, a pavise shield is used often by crossbowmen, really. It's a big, big shield. And they kind of, at least in like Total War games and such, the crossbowmen carry it on their backs. And it protects them when they're reloading their crossbow. She, of course, is very strong, does a lot of damage, has good armor, very poor will and speech, poor intelligence, but she does have tactics, which is a good thing to have. There are tactical challenges. She's a decent backup gatherer. And that's really it. Her folklore and animal kinship are not exceptionally great. And her shielding, not exceptionally great. But that will get better. Then we have Lion Gatewatch. Lion is also a warrior. So the name is appropriate. Not as strong as Mathie's. Good damage, good armor. Moderate will and speech. Moderate intelligence, but exceptional tactics. Tactics of five, that's exceptionally good. So I have to remember that Lion should be our main tactician, and we should consider that for challenges and whatnot. Folklore and animal kinship are okay. He has a little bit of stealth and dexterity, which is good for challenges. And, uh, not bad. It's used primarily in sneak challenges. I mean, they're basic level ones of each, but better than nothing, right? Then we have Carl Pilkington. Carl is a gatherer. Although he's relatively strong and does decent damage, his will is, an, is seven, not as great as our craftsman, but still pretty good. Speech is five, that's also pretty good. So if we ever get surprise attacked in our village, or if we ever want to ha send him with us on a gathering expedition, he will help us in speech challenges. Intelligence is not great, but his gathering is a whopping seven, which is very good. He has two perception, which is pretty decent. He has a sixth sense. So, Carl... Carl has many skills. He bow skills, nunchuck skills. Carl has a lot of skills. Then we have Kalia. Kalia is another warrioress, and she is strong and does decent damage, but her armor is where she shines. Will and speech are okay. Intelligence, okay. She does have tactics, though not as good as... Not Carl, but uh, Lion. But she does poison damage. Is that because... Yeah, that's because of her Sword of Darkness that she wields. And she also has Bone Spike Armor. So I get the feeling that Kalia is kind of a... Kind of a rogue element in our village. She seems to enjoy the darkness. She's probably someone you do not want to mess with. Then we have Hannah C. Hannah C is also a warrior. She is, meh, not entirely strong. Her damage is actually pretty pitiful. And her armor's not great either. So for a warrior, she's not a great warrior. Her speech, however, is pretty good for our warriors. She has four tactics, which is great. She does have one ranged damage. That's interesting. And she also does poison attack due to her black sword. But I don't understand where the ranged damage comes from. She doesn't have a bow or anything of that sort. I don't know. Something about her gives her ranged damage. I cannot tell what. And finally, we are left with Amara. And Amara is also a warrioress. She is very strong. She does decent damage. Her armor leaves a little bit to be desired. Remember now, some of our people have like 20-something armor. So 10 is not great. Her will and speech are not exceptional. Tactics are good at 4. And that's really all about her. She's a she's a warrior, but she's not incredibly great at anything. Her damage is pretty decent. Oh, here we go. That's why. Because she has a two-handed sword. That's why her defense is pretty low. Because she doesn't have a shield or anything of that nature. But her damage should be pretty exceptional. And she does have additional shielding from the sword. So nine damage. Lion does ten. So Matthews is a whopper at 18 damage. And next is Kali at 14, but Amara is the best. Why does it say 21 all of a sudden? Now I'm confused. The sword gives 9 damage. So Amara does the best damage. I guess it's a combination of her weapon and her just innate badassery. So we're going to want Amara to be kind of the one who gets to attack first and quickly, but doesn't hopefully get hit. So I'm going to have to tactically place her in such a way that other members of our party, maybe Lion, who have exceptional armor, Lion and Kalia, get to take the brunt of the damage while 
Mathies, Hannah, and Amara just do attacks. So to utilize the terminology that is prevalent in MMOs, Lion, I'm not, I'm sorry, yeah, Lion and Amara, no, Lion and Kalia are our tanks, and Mathies, Hannesy, and Amara are our DPS. There we go, all right. So we don't have much though, everybody has been assigned something. I think the only thing we have left that no one's using right now is an Iron Buckler, which we could potentially deconstruct to get Iron and Amber. That wouldn't be bad. I think the way to do that... Ah, that's right, is to go here. And we have a kid. Oh, we have two kids. Exceptional. So they will soon grow up into strong villagers that will defend us from evil. Dismantle. Alright, so let's look at our resources. We do have a teensy bit of iron. A little bit more gold. Some clay. One bone, one monster bone, that is to say. Some leather, some topaz, a bunch of amber. Some elven wood, which is pretty decent. And of course, we're burning our regular wood. And we do have a few herbs. I don't like them to be eaten, even though you can cook with them. I like them to be used for medicine purposes. We have some string. And we're not going to burn our coal. And we're going to be sparing with our meat. Since we have a ton of vegetables, we're going to eat them mostly, and the meat we want to keep around, because the more different food items you have, the better bonuses your team has. So you don't want to use up all your meat and have nothing but vegetables. So I will try to manage that. To the best of my ability, bulk. This is new. I'm sure it does something, I just don't know what. Alright, everyone is equipped. Relatively good. We're all set up here. Maybe I should ban. Let's see. So, if we go out on adventure and carry both sources of meat, we get plus one health. So actually, I'm going to ban the eating of meat. Hmm. Well, actually, see, here's the problem. I want to ban the eating of meat in the settlement, where it's not that important, but I want them to eat it on the away team. But I think this is universal. So if I ban the eating of meat in the settlement, I will also ban it everywhere else. So I shall unban it for now. Let's see, what do we want here? One will is not necessary. Shielding and dexterity is pretty good. Movement is pretty good. If we have eight different types of food, that would really make us unstoppable. We'd have additional melee and range damage, plus additional health, plus additional all this ancillary stuff. That would be really useful, but eight different types of food. That seems a little on the crazy side. We'll do what we can. All right. So let's look at the world. We know of a hive, but we haven't. We don't know much more. We should probably check the area directly around the village just to prevent us from having to deal with threats. Now, I know that the game has a new feature that allows you to set an expedition like set a standard expedition and have that go out each time so you don't have to create an expedition each time. However, I currently don't know how to do that. So if you do, please say so in the comments. That would be lovely. But right now we're going to leave our craftsmen and our gatherers. So we'll take Lion, Artanis, Carl, Kalia, Hannah, and... We will leave Mathies in the village to guard our gathering operation because she's all around. She's well-rounded. She has 14 armor, 18 damage, so she's good in most places. Kalia should always be with the away team because she's probably our best in total output. Let's see, 23 plus 14, 37, 32. One. Yeah, so Kalia, when you combine armor and damage, is our strongest. Alright, there's our away team. Now, I need to provide them with... They have other weapons and such. I have to provide them with food. Yes, we'll do ten. And a ton of vegetables. 
50. And I know when I did my showcase on this game, people were like, oh, you're giving your guys too much food. So I'm reducing it now, but I don't like running out of food in the field. It is not something I enjoy particularly. But we'll have to see what happens. And let's let's give them a good amount of wood. Because we are harvesting more. And we'll leave the herbs in our village. Alright, the expedition is set. Let me just make sure that all of our gathering operations are going according to plan here. They are not. So Nazoth, you can help with the vegetables since we're not producing anything just yet. And we have Jeremiah's and Arcana's doing wood. Amount of production completed. Oh, right, because we are currently gathering a set amount of things, right? That's right. I'm sorry, it's been a while since I've played this, since a lot of changes have been made, and there used to be an infinity button that just said you were going to go ahead and produce things forever. And I'm trying to figure out how to do that again. Yeah, I could have sworn that there was an infinity button. Maybe maybe they're now automatically infinity until you stop them. I don't know. We'll see. We shall find out. All right, away team. No, not not Aurelia. All right. Let's head up here. See what's beyond the northwestern horizon. Undead. Foul foul monsters. Or I should say unliving. Which actually makes more sense than undead. Alright. Alright. We can fight them or retreat them. And we have three unavailable options. View my group. Well, I know who my group is. Let's go. The undead filth must be exterminated. Okay. Lion, definitely want him. He's a tough tank. But our other tanks, or all of our tactical guys are our next best after Lion. Let's just try to reshuffle. Well, we lost Lion, but we gained. Ah, we'll just do it. Alright, so unliving corpses, we know them as zombies, are pretty beefy. Not too dangerous, though. So what we want to do is we want to hit them up with people who can do a lot of damage. Or we can confuse him so that we get a free attack. That's useful as well. Counter tactic of two. That's a pretty low counter tactic, but we are early in the game. Come on, Carl. Let's see what you can do, buddy. And it worked. Excellent. Excellent. Good job, Carl. And let's throw Kalia out there. And the broken skeleton. Alright, so the first thing, let's confuse. And confuse. Alright, so we're going to get a free attack. And let's hope it's enough. Nice. Wow. Well, Artanis, not the best, but that's okay. We got rid of the skeleton and the unliving corpse. We have one skeleton left. I'm sure Lion can make short work of him. Especially with a little help from Artanis. And... A little bit of confusion. And a little bit more help. And let's just throw Amara. Now, Carl is pretty weak with only eight. But he has the five shielding, but still. Carl is definitely not someone I want to take hits. 
And that was all we needed. Alright, so we gained a shield that we don't need, and some experience and research. Lovely. And it's something we can interact with. Let's do it. Search. You search the abandoned abodes and open some old, dusty cellar. As the heavy doors crack, you are swarmed by some crazed bats. Alright, so we have four deformed bats and three hulking rats. No. Definitely want to resh- oops. Definitely want to reshuffle that one. That is what it is. Hannah C has pretty good shielding. So even her overall low level of defense would be okay. But we're going to put Lion first. And... Okay, so Carl is our tactical guy. None of these guys can, can get rid of cards. So we can shield Lion, which we are outnumbered, so that might be helpful. But we might also want to wait and shield someone else. Or we can... Confuse one of the rats. Hmm. We could also have Kali I get closer. Let's do that. We'll do that later though. Let's first. He does two damage. That's not that bad. He wouldn't be the one I'd want to confuse. Alright, we'll shield him. Let's see what they do. Alright, let's get Hannah out there. And let's just go ahead and shield her as well. Or we can't. We'll do that next. These guys don't seem to be too much of a problem. Famous last words, I know. Alright, we'll definitely get... Kalia closer. And then we'll end up with Carl. Hopefully no one will attack Carl. We shall see. Their attacks are pretty poor, but they do have decent health. But Lion is able to take the brunt of it. If we had blunt weapons, we'd be much more effective in this fight, because there's a lot of low-level, weak enemies. But Carl was able to fix it for us. All right, what do we win here? Some bird meat, some meat meat, some sandstone, more bird meat, and some malachite. Excellent. All right, ladies and gentlemen, well, our foray out into the wilderness has gone pretty well so far. We've defeated two enemies in battle, and we haven't really been injured at all. So I'd say that's a win once again. I am Marcus Aurelius. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good one.